Okay, I'm going to try to give you a little example of what the uh, the cool orange thread model does and how it works here for what you're trying to accomplish. So let's just get us a new part. Uh, one second, grab something basic here. Uh, basic part. Sorry, a little slow. Come on, come on, come on. All right. Let's get rid of these two. All right. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put a hole in here. Yay. And let's do. All right. So we're gonna do a three-eighths hole, and then I'll do a three-eighths rod, and we'll just put those together. So the thing about the thread modeler is, I know the tap drill size for a three-eighths hole is not three seven five, but Cool Orange is going to fill all that stuff in. We don't technically have to know that. All it wants you to do is, if it's a three-eighths hole, it wants you to, or a three-eighths thread, it wants you to put a three-eighths hole in there. So I do this in two steps. This is what I found out works the best, and I've made hundreds of parts with Cool Orange. Um, some have been printed. The rest we use for renders because I need to show the threads actually sitting inside each other, and I know that this works. So just bear with me. You can adapt it, you know, however you want to do it. I'm just going to show you how I do this. So we'll do a 3 8 uh, thread. I'm going to go ahead and make a 3 8 hole. We'll just go all the way through. I'm not worrying about any of these other options, and I'm not doing the thread. I'm not doing the threaded feature here. I'm just going to do a hole first. Then I'm going to come back in and do the 3 8 on there. So it's going to go ahead and choose 3 8 16. That's fine to be right hand. You don't need to worry about that. The full length. Apply that. Now I'm going to run the cool orange. So we run the uh, threaded modeler on that. I don't know why that goes to the second screen. And it's going to fill all this stuff in here. And it's going to fill it to the inside of the hole. That's why you have to use the nominal hole sizes, because it's going to fill in. It's not going to fill out. It's not going to detect that you're the, the, um, the minimum hole size, and it's going to cut in. It's going to detect that you're at the nominal hole size or the... Or the um, the maximum hole size and it's going to fill in. So once you do this, you got to do a couple other things after that. One is you want to go ahead and combine the solids. Um, otherwise, you're not going to be able to cut the chamfers afterwards. So just do that there and go ahead and cut this. I'm not sure what, I can't remember what the chamfer size is for this. Nominal chamfer size. Give me one second and I will look it up. It's here someplace. Uh, 3 eighths. Uh, 16. Doo, doo, doo. That's supposed to say 3 eighths right there. All right, so that's 3950. So I've got this sheet that I've made um, that gives me all the stuff, but I do have the chamfer size here for external thread and the OD chamfer for internal. Um, so 0.395, that's fine. So dimension that. Uh, that'll give us the correct size there. And I do my chamfers like this um, for different reasons. You can, um, you'll find out later. You'll find out as you're doing this. Uh, the, you know, I do it like this because if you're doing something that's automated on here, it can find that feature. It can find this surface feature, but it can't always find that edge, especially if you go back and redo this thread size because you can't change the thread size once it's once it's done, it's a lot. You know, it's not live. So, all right. So let's save this part here, and we'll just uh, save it here. Uh, the cool orange, uh, sure one. All right. Let's make a different thread here. Now, this is where your machinist handbook is going to come in real useful here, because we want to find out what the nominal OD should be for this thing. So, the external uh, major diameter on the 3 8 is going to be 369 so that's what we're going to use for that so while it doesn't want that information on the internal thread it does like that information on the external thread so let's do something similar here take this out not that not that one and what do we say 0 0.369 I think is what I said right uh, yep 0.369, 2 inches, 
Then we'll attach our thread feature to that. Make sure we're good there, full length, yay. All right, thread model. Same thing, uh, we're gonna combine the solids on these so we can get the chamfers to work. If you don't combine these solids and you try to chamfer that thing, it's gonna cut it to the inside of the threads because obviously the thread is a separate solid. And on here, for my external, my chamfer is going to be 2792. Okay, so we'll look this on that cool orange 2. Okay, um, new assembly. Um, don't have any assemblies in there. Don't have any in there. There we go. All right, bear with me one second till I get the parts in. All right, let's get this guy flipped around here. All right, now we can kind of see what's going to be going on here once this catches up. You can see that these threads will now sit correctly inside one another. So if you were to 3D print this or whatever, now this is just a nominal fit. Um, it's not close, it's not loose, um, whatever this nominal is. But you should be able to... Uh, go ahead and print this and that these threads will work just fine now if I were to do this a different way had I done here I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like had I done the what I'm gonna have to do here is I gotta get rid of all this this is what happens if you have to change size on the on the uh, the cool orange because it like I said it's not a live thread if I take this down and we edit this to the nominal we edit this down to like a tap drill size which is uh, not what you want to do, but we're at 375 right now. Let's find out what the tap. Actually, I may not have the tap drill sizes listed on here, but I can go to the miner. So let's see here. So uh, 314, that's to the miner size. You'll see that the cool orange will not build out, it only builds in. So you got to keep that in mind. Um, hey, where's my inventor? There it is. So uh, 0.314. Oops. Now when I build that out, I've still got a three. I've still got a three six or three eighths on here. It's saying that, but obviously the hole is a lot smaller. So let's go ahead and and, um, and build that back out. You're going to see it's going to build to the inside again, which is exactly what we don't want in this case. This is why you have to use that nominal hole size. Let me just combine these two real quick. Get that extrusion back. Save. Obviously, you can see this is not going to work. And then when we come back into here, we'll update this. What I'll do is turn this one clear as well. And you can see where you can see here. Here's the bottom of the thread instead of being right here. So you've got to use that. What that nominal hole size is. You have to use what the nominal hole size is. If you do that, your threads should work just fine. And when you print them, they should be able to screw together just fine. Hope this helps. Kids are calling. Gotta go.